AI voice agents are now better than humans at call transfers. In this video, I'm going to prove it. If you're new here, my name's Tommy Christ. I run a company called Rose AI, where we've automated over 100,000 real calls using voice AI agents. And call transfers are one of the most important aspects of any build we do. And by the end of this video, you'll learn how to set up warm transfers, whisper messages, and dynamic call routing, all with AI voice agents. I'll do this by showing you every single feature Retail AI has related to call transfers. I'll break down the difference in call transfers between single prompt and conversational flow agents. I'll make sure you have every piece of information and knowledge you need to be an expert in AI voice agent call transfers inside of Retail AI. If you'd like to work with me and my agency personally, make sure to book a call down below. And if you just want to learn more about voice AI agents, make sure to join my free community and let's hop into the video. So before we actually hop into retail AI and I show you everything it actually has to offer in terms of call transfers, I want to go through their documentation, which I know it's a bit nerdy, it's a bit in the weeds, but it's important to understanding the actual depth and all the actual additional features they've added to their call transfers. So first, I'd recommend going to the docs, so it's just docs.retailai.com, anytime you want to understand more about any feature, but they have a basic breakdown of how to actually configure everything. But what I want to look at is all the extra features they have. So they have two different transfer types, which makes sense. There really aren't any other types of transfers out in the real world if you were to have a human do this. So that is cold transfers, which is you just transfer the call. You don't say anything to either the person that is already on the line or the person that the call is being transferred to, or you have warm transfers where, as it says here, after the call is transferred, the agent actually detects if the other side is a human and then talks to them in either a private or a three-way message. So basically a cold transfer, like that is a hard stop to that conversation. I really don't use cold transfers. I don't know why you would. So while a cold transfer only really has one thing that can happen, warm transfer has three. One, the call gets transferred and it says, speaks a message to the person it's transferring to. The second option is the call gets transferred and it speaks a message to both people. And then lastly, the call isn't able to get transferred. The person um, that the call is being transferred to does not pick up. And so the AI actually stays on the line with that person and can potentially take a message. And so warm transfers is what I use in all my production agents and why I recommend just a lot more flexible compared to the cold transfer, which is really a hard stop in the conversation. Now, you obviously need a phone number to actually transfer the call to, so you will configure that. This is super easy. I'll show you how to do that inside of there. Now, this is a bit more advanced, and especially for this video, I, I won't show it, especially because it differs between which voice platform your phone actually comes from, but you are, if you're so inclined, um, able to change whether you want to show the retail agent number so say you're getting a call transferred to you this ai the use case is that you know it's sort of like an initial sales agent and then it transfers to a senior representative and you're that senior representative you can choose whether you want to see the voice ai agent's number transferring the call on your phone or if you want to see the person who the conversation is actually with so that'd be the transferees number and then there are and this is the biggest update as of recently with retail ai there's a bunch of new settings for warm transfers that make it way more powerful. And so that's why I'm really excited to go in with you. And then uh, lastly, you can also add custom SIP headers. If you don't know what this means, then you don't need to use it. It's generally uh, how I like to look at a lot of these sort of like additional features that are more for edge cases. And so here we are inside retail. I have a very simple one sentence prompt. That's just ask the caller if they would like to transfer the call. If they say yes, then transfer the call by using the transfer underscore call function. And so anytime you have a transfer call function, I'll, I'll show you how to set this up here in a second. You do want to include in the prompt, this prompting, just like, hey, tell them when to run the transfer underscore call function. Make sure to call it exactly by what it's named here so that it knows when to actually run the function and it'll do it at a much higher accuracy and, and hit rate. Now to actually set up a transfer call function, what you need to do is come over here and nothing will actually be under this functions tab. You just click add call transfer. You'll be prompted with this window. Now I already have one set up with my phone number. So I'm just gonna come in here. And so this is what you'll be prompted with. You'll have to put in your phone number here and you have a couple different options here. So up here at the name, this is just what you call it. This is purely for your convenience. I recommend just keeping it transfer underscore call the solid name, it really doesn't matter. 
The description is basically extra prompting. So just like how you set up here to actually show when to run the function, this description sort of reinforces that. And so in this, I say, if they say yes, then transfer the call with the transfer call function. So something I might put in the description is run this function when the user says yes to confirm they want the call transferred. And so this is really just reinforcing what's existing in there. If you didn't have existing prompting in here, this can still run based on the description as like the only sort of context of when the function should be called, but just include both, you may as well, and it makes it a lot more consistent. Now we have this transfer to section, which is basically, do you want only transfer to one number or do you want to have it be able to transfer to multiple different numbers? So a static number like this would obviously just be one number. Dynamic routing would be if you have two or three, perhaps different departments or sales representatives that handle calls based on different criteria. So you can see their example here. If you want to reach support, transfer to, and then you put the number there. And then if they want to reach sales, transfer to, and then you put the number there. If you have this sort of situation, I actually recommend using a conversational flow agent, but I'll show you that once we're done here. But actually, if you do have multiple numbers you want to transfer to, I recommend using a conversational flow agent. I'll show you how to set that up in just a second. But coming back to this, I'm just going to use a static number for demo purposes in this. And then here's where you come to the type. So like I mentioned, cold transfer, this is just that one option. You transfer it, then it's done. So that's why it looks sort of plain now. But if you choose warm transfer, you see it opens up all these new settings. So you have stuff like the hold music, and that's pretty self-explanatory. This is what the person hears uh, while it's dialing the person it's transferring to. And so uh, ringtone is pretty normal. You can choose between that, relaxing sound or uplifting beats. I'll choose relaxing sound just because it's fun. Now this human detection is a new feature and it's huge. So what this does is it waits a designated amount of time. So you can see 30 to like 10 minutes or five minutes. And it basically waits to detect that long whether there's a human on the other side. So basically, I like to keep this at around 20 to 30 seconds. And that's basically the period of time you have or the AI is waiting to detect, OK, is there a real human or not? Is there a real human or not? Because before it used to get wigged out when a voicemail would happen and transfer someone on the voicemail because it would hear some sort of quote unquote sign of life, something talking and it thought that voicemail was a human. So this is just a bit more advanced where it now will wait 30 seconds is generally a good amount of time where if it rings and goes to voicemail, it'll be within this time period. And if it detects a voicemail, it'll then come back to the original conversation and potentially take a message or something like that. And so you can see here, it will not transfer if it detects a voicemail or non-human response. Now, this is something I recommend you just test. If you notice that this sort of fails a lot or it's this 30 seconds is not enough, just feel free to extend it. Super easy. That's all you have to do and then click update. But 30 seconds is good. Sometimes you can even do 20 seconds just so first on the other line isn't waiting. And so it's basically after 30 seconds, if there's nothing detected, then it won't transfer the call. Next, getting into this whisper message. This is a message that if you want to say summarize the call up to this point, either have a prompt do it where you can summarize sort of the conversation up to that point or a static sentence where it literally says summarize the call up to this point. And this whisper message is spoken only to the transfer agent, whereas this three-way message, which it used to only be a three-way message just before this update. And this would actually say, so say it was summarize the call up to this point. It would say the summary to both the person is transferring the call to, as well as the person on the line that is being transferred. So I don't know a whole lot of times you'd want to use a three-way message unless you're like, hey, John, I'm transferring you to Janice. And then once it connects, it's like, hey, John, this is Janice. I'll leave you to, to it now. And then that would be the three-way message. But generally, I recommend the whisper message. It just, person's getting transferred and that lets know like the agent, like, hey, this person was like mad about their billing. So then the person that's being transferred to can pick it up and be like, hey, I heard you had a problem with your billing. How can I help you? And then again, we're, we're not getting into the custom SIP headers. But I just want to show you this and I'll actually show you this in action now. So if I go here, I can basically call this agent. Um, this is just Google Voice, a free like web caller. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. 
How can I help you today? Um, I was wondering if you could transfer the call. Would you like me to go ahead and transfer the call for you? All right, I'll transfer the call for you now. Please hold on a moment. You can see the call is currently being transferred to me. I'll turn down my computer audio a second. You can hear the relaxing music. Hello. Hey. Hi, I have a customer on the line who would like to be transferred. They were just asking to be connected and are currently on hold. I'll let you take it from here. Okay. And then you can hear the, the whisper message. I got some nasty feedback because it transferred my computer phone to me. But you could hear the whisper message in there and sort of everything that was going on. It just said, hey, I have someone here who wants to be transferred to you. Obviously, in most use cases, there would be a lot more conversation on the front end. And that way, you know, there, there's a lot more to actually summarize. However, that is sort of a full breakdown of all this behavior. So let me show you what this would actually look like in a conversational flow agent. So if I come here and I create a conversational flow agent, let's say I'll give this a prompt introduce yourself. Now, like I mentioned before, in the call transfer, what you can do is you can have this dynamic routing, which basically routes based on like, hey, you want to reach support, whatever. I've tested this. I don't love how this prompt works. And so what I'd recommend is if you ever need to do dynamic routing, instead, what you should do is just create multiple like call transfer nodes and then have different criteria. So it'd just be choose this path if the person needs to reach the sales team and then that would be then here as be something like sales and then this would just be a static number change this to a static number be like customer as a support question and then boom this would be support and that way, instead of using this dynamic routing, you're able to do it in a much more almost controllable way where you can completely change the whisper message for each of these, whether you want a three minute message in one of them, but not the other. If you want just a cold transfer to sales, a warm transfer to support and all of that, where you just have a lot more control. And if you watch any of my other videos, you know, I always recommend conversational flow agents. This is one of the big reasons why there's a lot more flexibility and control that you have. And then you can just come on and um, continue with uh, creating your prompt here. If the user needs to return a package, you can say, tell them, no, <laughs> maybe we're, we're mean and we don't accept refunds. But yeah, I hope this was useful. Once again, if you want to work with me and my agency, make sure to book a call in the link below. If you want to learn more about voice AI agents and how to build them. Please join my free community. I have weekly Q and A's every Sunday, as well as a bunch more free resources you can find in there. And I'll see you in the next video.